Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Pradeep Sondarajan. Um, I hope you all can hear me clear. And if you can hear me clear, let's use the chat option over here to introduce yourself. Um, and uh, that'll be a good way to start while people keep joining in. I'm gonna keep the chat window open over here. Great. Yes, hi, Deepan. Ah, oh, Deepan is uh, in, in software testing for the last six years, now into leadership, looking forward to learn how to engage team from experienced leader like Pradeep. Okay, good. Somebody called me a leader. That's a good start to have. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, welcome, Deepan. Um, you know, looking forward to being of uh, good help to people. Uh, can you all see my screen? Can you all see a slide? slide? Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome. So Shashank is my buddy is going to, he's going to keep telling me what, what, yes, the first slide. Okay. Good. Okay. The first slide. Great. And uh, Deepa is also here. Deepa Bhatt. Um, Deepa, I hope the challenges are going good. I thought of nominating you for the challenge. So, uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, so let's wait for some more time, um, five more minutes for uh, people to join in. And uh, that's what usually takes to get few people who are registered in. They'll all be waking up to the idea that uh, it's time. It's time to get in. Somebody has joined, uh, somebody named Galaxy S10E has joined. Um, welcome to Galaxy. I'm very happy to be talking to the whole Galaxy over here. Oh, and then uh, here's uh, Jossley from uh, Mumbai who has joined in. Um, Sudindra is also here to add some kind of a peer pressure or something like that. That's good. That's good. Welcome, Sudindra. And uh, uh, Oh, there is Guruji as well. Um, you know, we have some really special people joining in today for for this um, for this you know webinar over here. Uh, we're just uh, waiting for a few more people to join. Um, and uh, you know, Guruji, as you know, uh, people are stuck in traffic, is what I'm heard. And uh, uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, you know, Jostly. Uh, so people are people are joining in one by one. It usually takes five minutes for people to realize that they've actually registered and joined in. So yesterday we had about a hundred people, and uh, we couldn't accommodate everybody who were registering after that. And so we thought we'll do a rollover session today, um, and that's what it is, you know. And I see a, a you know a couple of people from you know Mulya as well in this, uh, uh, you know, group. And what I like about, uh, you know, today's, uh, you know, webinar is we have people from, from, uh, from other industries as well. We don't have people just from testing, you know, space. We have, uh, uh, we have, you know, Narayan, uh, who is, uh, who is the group leader for, uh, you know, Wipro. Um, so, he, he brings in uh, quite a lot of leadership experience. So if I'm um, not making sense, then the Guruji will take over. And then we have, you know, Sudindra. Sudindra is a CEO of a company. So he also is in a position of leadership. So I'm really uh, glad to have these uh, people who have uh, been there, done that. Um, and uh, so that, uh, you know, they will support and help me out whatever you know required but you can continue to use the chat option over in here to either introduce yourself and i'm going to be asking a bunch of questions um i'm constantly looking at the time as well um and uh it's 4 in about two minutes i think we should get started otherwise uh, 
we will slip over for people who have joined in on the right time. So that's, you know, two more minutes uh, to introduce yourself to this group. Um, and we have 21 participants in right now. We also have, you know, Kuzil joining in. We have, uh, we have you know, Shanmugam and uh, probably also his wife, you know, joining in. That's uh, you know, really good. And, uh, you know, welcome to Shanmugam and his wife for, for, for this. Um, and then uh, there are... Um, we just have one more minute to go and then we will get started off. I see there in the people who have registered, uh, uh, there's, there's a few more people, I guess they would, they would, you know, they wake up, they need a little more time to wake up, but, but any which way we will get started off in a minute. Um, I have my water bottle next to me, so I'm good. I don't need to, uh, you know, run in between. <laughs> anywhere i hope so so uh we'll have some you know good fun learning leadership together and uh we are we've hit the time we've hit the time and uh let you know people join okay as, as they want to join at their own you know time somebody else although you can also join right now great so um you know when uh, uh, you know, first of all, I hope each one of you, your family, your team, everybody is safe, everybody is healthy, you're, uh, you know, keeping good social distancing. Also, I hope you're keeping good, healthy practices um, for yourself and your family members. I hope you are all uh, not, uh, you know, snacking too much, and uh, I hope you're all exercising. Um, and that's essentially what I'm also doing, uh, with some partial success here and there. So, uh, you know, let's, you know, begin on the you know topic of leadership and then, uh, being calm during the chaos. What a moment we are in. Um, one question that, uh, has come to me in the last 15 days from various people from, uh, you know, from some employees uh, in Mulya, from uh, people outside of Mulya as well, is what's going to happen? Um, if, you know, you know, how is the economy going to be? Um, and uh, so nobody knows what's going to happen, but they still ask this question, <laughs> right? So that's that's the chaos. They know that the people to whom they're asking this question don't actually know the answer, but still they would like to hear a perspective. So. Uh, you know, collecting way too many perspectives that can that can add to the chaos as well. So, uh, you know, I want to begin, uh, you know, with a question, um, uh, you know, to all of you. And, you know, before that, I want to talk to you about one of my mentors. Um, you know, his name is Jerry Weinberg. And when I got introduced to Jerry Weinberg in 2000 and 2007-8, um, and in his website, even today, uh, you know, he passed away two years ago, but, uh, um, even in his website, you know, today, uh, he said his purpose was, uh, was to make smart people happy. And I asked Jerry Weinberg, why would you want to make smart people happy? Aren't, aren't they happy already? Because they're smart people. And then, you know, Jerry gave an answer and, you know, Jerry is this kind of person where the answer that he gives is a really deep answer. And I took several years to understand um, why Jerry's uh, purpose was this. So when I tried to learn to test better, when I tried to become smarter, I was slowly losing my happiness. <laughs> Right. So the more and more, you know, the more and more you figure out that, you know, people around you are doing things without understanding certain things. And then that certainly troubles you because you're the person who knows and the people around you don't know. So they are all doing in a direction. They're all going in a direction that's going against what you have learned. And then you become unhappy. So, so then I understood after several years of, First, you know, discovering what, you know, Jerry said, I discovered that smart people uh, can, can be a lot unhappy people. And, and I've wondered this, I've, I've looked at, you know, I've, I've been, you know, fired in organizations um, and uh, I looked at, you know, testers, all, all, all other, you know, testers out there 
And then I was wondering like, okay, here's, here's me whom I claim to be passionate. And here are they, they just want to come and, you know, you know, do their, what's a nine to five job. And then, and they're completely detached. They're like saints who are completely detached from the outcomes. And they are, they don't care about how good the testing is going, whether it's the right way, it's the right direction and things like that. And they just want to, um, you know, so they were so detached. And so for me, I was like, why is my passion creating all this problem for me in life? So, so, so I understood that uh, uh, the smartness that we are adding, we are trying to become more and more intelligent people. And that's what is actually causing a lot of, you know, pain for a lot of us um, in the way the, you know, the business are, you know, structured or in the way we have been, you know, taught to work with people. So, um, so that's, that's one thing that I understood. And then um, I want to ask you all this question, right? Um, you can use the chat, you can use the group chat and type, type the answer for this question. What are you paid for? What, what do you think your organization pays you for? You can, I'm just going to pause and just wait for you all to type in your, you know, what's the answers and that's how I continue. So this is not my lecture. This is, there'll be a, this is like an impro based on what you say um, is, is how my content gets, you know, tuned. So, uh, you know, Jocelyn says knowledge. So, okay, any more answers coming in? What are you paid for? What are you paid for? To help customers. Okay, you're paid to help customers. Great. Okay, knowledge of okay. helping customers. You're paid for the experience. Okay, paid for the skills, paid for the value, paid for the value we bring to the table. Okay. Great, awesome. Experience and skills, okay. Okay, nice. Unclutter the chaos towards clarity, wow, okay. Positive energy you bring in, good, okay. Expertise, so, so there is a variety of answers over here, right? Now, um, yeah, to solve problems, to increase revenue and reduce costs, all of that stuff. Okay, great, so for you know, problem solving, to get the job done, to add value. So those are some uh, good diverse answers over here. Now, uh, you know, essentially, if you look at it, um, most of the organizations who hire, you know, people for a certain job, they, they, um, uh, they, you know, people think that they pay to either run tests or write code or, you know, manage people and, you know, um, you know, things like that. Do we, um, do we also think that we are paid to be leaders? Do we think that we are paid to be polite? Do we think that we are paid to be kind? Do we think that we are paid to be uh, professional? You know, why, why am I asking you all these questions? Is because um, if you look at your career so far, um, you've worked with a lot of, you know, people, let's say, right? And some people were, uh, you know, professional, some people were not professional but they were doing similar stuff, right? They were, they were also writing code or they were, you know, you know, running tests and, you know, stuff like that. But you didn't want to work with somebody who's just knowing how to do the work. You wanted to work with somebody who is a leader, who is, uh, who is you know, professional, who is ethical and all of that stuff. So, so usually when an organization hires people, they, the organization and the people take it for granted that we are hiring a leader, we are hiring a professional person, we are hiring an ethical person and all of that stuff. But then these are some of the things that we take for granted as what has been costing our industry quite a lot. And that's where, um, you, know, you know, I'm coming to. I, I, I interact with a lot of uh, people who are, you know, test leads and you know, QA leads and automation leads and SDET leads. And, you know, today there are so many varieties of um, names, names to a simple thing called, you know, test lead or a test, right? We have a test lead, we have an automation lead, we have, a, we have an exploratory testing lead, we have a functional testing lead, we have QA lead, or we have a QC lead, all indicating that the same thing that they're doing, right? Uh, so, so, so essentially, um, uh, one of the things that I, I was I was trying to understand by talking to a lot of you know testers is that they spend a lot of time learning 
about you know testing so if somebody is a test lead they would have invested a lot of time learning about you know testing and very little about leadership very very little about leadership and 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 i come across so many testers i interview a lot of testers i come across so many testers i've hired a lot of testers and you know this is one aspect where um you know people don't focus on because they think that they get it um and 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 that's been a very big you know problem um you know for our industry because i've seen leadership failure in testing has costed more than bugs in production <laughs> right and i'm going to give you some examples around it so um you know we we were you know um so i've been a part of an automation project where uh, the teams were working on on you know building the whole automation for, for for an entire year and there were like 1400 plus test cases or something like that that were you know automated and then um, you know there was a leadership change that happened and uh, when the leadership change happened um, all of the work was actually scrapped and uh, they, and and then you know the new leader who came and said, "Oh, I don't agree with whatever the previous person uh, wanted, and I just want to restart this whole stuff." Of a whole year of work. Okay, think about it. If you work for ten years in the industry, somebody comes in and just says the whole the last one year, whatever whatever you did, no matter how much hard work you did, no matter how many weekends you slog for it, it's all gone. How do you feel? I've been in that, you know, situation. I've, I've, I've interacted with, you know, testers in that, you know, situation. Okay. And then I've also been in situation where, um, you know, two, you know, uh, you know, this is a lesson I've learned, like, you know, don't bring in two, two experts um, with their ego together. Uh, they're going to create massive amount of clashes. Individually, they might be rock stars, but then um, if they don't know to work with people. So, so we had a situation where, um, you know, we had, you know, somebody who was defining the framework for automation and then, you know, a new architect actually took over, um, you know, it, you know, role and he, and he started arguing about what is a good framework. And we were stuck for three months, not producing anything because these two people weren't agreeing <laughs> we're agreeing on what's the right framework to build. Now, uh, you know, look at the plight of the people dependent on them. Look at the plight of people uh, who are actually reporting to them. For three months, they were, you know, scampering around like a mouse of like, what's the direction are we going to take? So, so, so I have seen um, that, uh, you know, uh, what's it, the leadership failure has has costed more more than bugs in production because if there's a bug in production, I think uh, 99 out of the 100 companies would want to fix it if the customers are complaining about it, right? But what is invisible to a lot of organizations is, is the internal leadership failure, which is something that creates all these bugs, right? So so essentially that I've actually seen it. Okay, now I'd like to pause and I would like to ask each one of you who are who are in this you know webinar. Um, of let's say um, you know how many people are you a leader to so so how many people report to you how many people are you leading today one okay great none okay Shane Oscar Yala says none great okay any more answers coming in I'm leading myself five twelve six leading nine three uh, okay awesome one Good, good, good. So, so, um, so yesterday there were plenty of people who said zero, uh, you know, none answers. And, and uh, the reason why I'm asking this question is that um, we, we are a leader to ourselves. If we know how to lead ourselves, then we know how to lead others. Uh, most of the leadership failures also that I've seen, yes, of course. <laughs> okay, okay, Guruji has 250 people reporting to him. Um, so, so uh, you know, if people, you know, the leadership failures that I've seen are, are, are that, you know, people who don't know to lead themselves, leading others, uh, add, add to the chaos of, of the things that are actually being done. 
So I'm going to ask you this question, uh, and I want your answers for this. Why do people fail as leaders? Why do you think people fail as leaders? So while you answer this question, I'm going to sip some water, and I'm going to read out whatever comes on the chat, um, and I'm going to frame my next set of you know, things that I'm going to say based on it. Why do people fail as leaders? Why? So people are thinking, hmm, they don't practice what they expect. Uh-huh, okay. Okay, so Arun says they don't practice what they expect from others. Okay, good, good. Okay, that's one. Um, maybe, maybe, okay, again, I'm gonna, I have to flag, uh, you know, Shashank for the word maybe there. Maybe regressive thought processes, okay. Uh, no clear goal and understanding of the team. Okay. Too much focus on process and not on the outcomes running with different set of goals than what is needed for the corporation. Okay. Great Guruji. Uh, but you know, because they turn into managers. Great. Okay. They feel, uh, they feel they got power after becoming leader. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. They're not trained. Absolutely. They're not trained or they don't have a stable thought. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, not understanding team members' emotion, they can't handle pressure, only focused on, you know, delivery. Okay, what else? What else? What are the, what are the reasons why people fail as leaders? Are, are these the only reasons that you can think of? These are good ones, but I'm just saying that, okay, are these the only ones? Okay, delegation. Okay, they fail to delegate sometimes or they over-delegate. Um, you know, that could be, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so, so we have some uh, good, you know, diverse set of answers coming in, right? We have some good, you know, diverse set of answers coming in. And, uh, uh, and so let's begin with what, what actually Arun said. They don't practice what they expect from others. Okay, so I'm going to ask this question to Arun. So Arun, why is it that they don't practice what they expect from others? Why? Why? Why is it that they don't do it? Do you know why? Uh, this why is a bit difficult for me to answer. But, okay. Uh, uh, because if they are expecting something, that should mean if anything has to start, whether that could be the change or that could be the outcome, that okay. has to start from the leader. That's what I I expect. Yes. Uh, and, and there's a specific reason why I asked the question, why, <laughs> right? So why, yes. why is it that they don't practice what they preach or what, they, what they're expecting from others? Now, it's a difficult question, right, Arun? It's a very difficult question. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's a, it's a difficult question. Exactly. I don't have... I don't have the answer means I'm looking for, but I don't get the answer. Okay, great. Well, welcome to this webinar. <laughs> okay, so 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 essentially, uh, I, you know, I'm going to ask you another question here. Okay, right now, why do skilled people fail as leaders? Now you answered. Now you answered this question of why do people fail as leaders. Now I'm just adding a little extra extra element over to it why do skilled people fail as leaders okay so we are, we're already getting answers overconfident feeling i'm the best awesome okay so and, uh, skilled people uh should i go ahead or uh, it's yeah, chat? Arun, you can actually chat uh, you can actually yeah, sure. type in and then i will when i when i call you out you know separately you can then uh, voice over Great. So, so feeling overconfident, you know, feeling I'm the best. Okay. Not trusting the team members. Um, and, uh, and what are the other, you know, reasons, um, fail to do knowledge transition. Okay. Because they don't focus on the people part of the team. Okay. Awesome. Focus on improving skills. Good, 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 good. So there's again, some good diverse, you know, set of answers actually coming in. Right. Okay, no effective communication. So, so essentially, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this, uh, you know, beautiful, uh, um, what's, a, uh, what's a analogy. Uh, we're, all, we're all a cricket-loving nation, um, and I don't see 
people outside of India in at least in the webinar you know today. Um, so 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 essentially, um, you know, if you look at um, you have heard of this uh, word called you know sledging, right? So what what is essentially sledging um, is that uh, there you know there's a the group of people in the team starts um, throwing taunts at 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 the players uh, who are either batting or bowling, uh, trying to defocus them, trying to put them in a pressure you know situation and all of that stuff. Now, uh, why do they do that? Essentially, is is that they know that you know the they can't beat them over the skills, but if they were to get these skilled people to defocus, right? Okay, get these you know people to defocus from the you know from the focus that they had, then they know that they can even make a absolute skilled player to get out. And yes. Sachin is the world's best batsman, but was not a great leader. Okay, I will certainly, certainly come to that. That's a very good analogy as well, right? So, so, um, uh, so you know, skilled people, when they are defocused, when they're pressurized, uh, it's become the number one reason of why they fail. Now, now this industry, this industry, and I'm also including myself into it, we have this absolute beautiful, uh, beautiful mistake that we've been committing over years. To the moment we we find a skilled person, we promote them to be the lead, and we screw up uh, the whole team opportunity itself. Right? Sometimes because because not all uh, you know skilled people can lead a team, uh, and and I I don't think organizations have still learned this yet. They've burned their fingers, but they still haven't learned this yet. Uh, and not all people also understand this, right? For example, I'm just going to use whatever, you know, what say Arun actually shared. But that's a great example. So Sachin was a, was a great batsman, but when he took over as a captain, he was, he was compromising his batting skills and he was also not able to uh, get good success rates in terms of, uh, you know, the wins. Um, and then he said, okay, this is not working out for me. Okay, think about it. If, if somebody like Sachin, whom we consider as the god of cricket, can make a mistake of picking up leadership when he's not ready for it or he's not you know, tuned for it, all of us can do this mistake, right? So, so, so that's essentially um, uh, you know, one of the pointers that we need to look at in terms of the leadership aspect of it. And then it's also about, um, you know, uh, you know the pressure what's the aspect of it now why do you think people uh you know come into a pressure you know situation have you been into a pressure situation in your project and 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 have you seen your your leaders been in a pressure situation why do you think the pressure situation comes so yeah i'm looking at the chat window right now and i'm saying that and i'm asking you this question of why do you think uh, the pressure situation comes. Lack of experience. Okay. So that's, yeah, could be one of them. Absolutely perfect. Um, so today, when, when I, um, you know, um, when I look at a lead, I think that the first few years of they being a lead, is like a rookie experience for them. They're going to make a lot of mistakes. And, and an organization should have a mechanism, uh, you know, built in to, 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 to help them not make too big mistakes and also help the team be aware that, yes, your leader is a fresh, fresher. <laughs> he might be great or she might be great, but they are a fresher right now because this is the first time that they've taken a, taken a leadership role. Okay, the other uh, you know, responses that are coming in is no proper planning. Okay, yes, yes. Lack of growth mindset across the teams, fine. Okay, yes, I've been or you know, seen and been in that. You know, demands from different timelines, from different projects, fantastic. Okay, major gap between strategy and implementation. Welcome to the club. <laughs> it'll, it'll always, it, it will come always important is how one handles it, yes. You know, so that's the that's the point that I was actually getting, you know, towards, is that uh, the pressure is always going to be there, 
the pressure is always going to be there one thing or the other. So there's different kinds of pressures that can come in. There can be a budget pressure. There can be a financial pressure. There can be a timeline pressure. There can be, um, you know, you know, a deliverable pressure. There can be a, a result pressure. And, and, and we humans um, are, are systematically trained to, to uh, become uh, emotional, to become frustrated, to become people who feel that, oh, I'm under pressure and not about being someone like Mahendra Singh Dhoni, where being calm under the most chaotic situation. We have seen, um, you know, Mahendra Singh Dhoni uh, recover Team India from where we thought, you know, it's lost. I'm sure you would have been a part of you know, this, that you thought the match is gone and then you, you know, switch off the TV and then somebody calls you and says, did you see the match? And you're like, oh my God, I missed it, right? Um, so, so, you know, so, so being calm is such a premium. And why being calm is such a premium is because we just behave the way we've been systematically trained right from our childhood, in our school, in our college, and in the first few years of our work experience is that, we're systematically trained to feel the pressure by our so-called leaders or by our so-called teachers, by our so-called whoever, is that, is that we, want, we want people to feel the pressure, right? Even including our own you know, kids, sometimes I'm guilty if I'm, you know, when, I'm, when I'm talking to my daughter and I'm asking her to feel bad for what she did. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing to my own daughter? I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want this to happen, right? So we are kind of systematically being driven as a culture to, to feel, you know, to feel emotional when things are going, not, not going in the direction we want them to go in, right? And, and, and uh, you know, that is where, um, you know, being calm needs to be practiced. Being calm needs to be practiced, yes? Uh, and, and, and why, you know, I started looking at reasons of why can't people be calm? Okay, for example, let's say um, the, reason why, the reason why people can't be calm is that they think of a number of repercussions that can happen, the, you know, right? Because they can say, oh my God, if I don't do this, then the, the, the appraisal gets affected. If the appraisal gets affected, the hike gets affected. The, if the hike gets affected, my home loan EMI and my marriage plans and all of that get affected. And if that get affected, my pressure from my parents, uh, you know, gets increased and or my, from my, you know, spouse gets increased or from, from my, what's it, in-laws get increased. All sorts of things that comes into the mind with just one small thing that's happening at the workplace. And this is how we have been systematically trained, you know, quite a lot. And so, so essentially, you know, you know, much, much, you know, before somebody answered this of saying the, you know, the primary job of a leader is to solve problems. It's, and, and it's actually everybody's job. And, you know, that's the reason why I think everybody is a leader. And I'll also come to that. Now, if we have to solve problems, the problems that we face at work are at, are actually objective problems, not subjective problems. So if we can, if we can remove the subjectivity and look at the objective problem, okay, then it can look very, very simple. You know, for instance, if somebody estimated it wrong, <laughs> if somebody estimated it wrong and you have to meet that, you know, deadline, well, don't bother. And yet, if you want to achieve the same result that you would have achieved if the estimation had been right, then you know that's where you're screwing yourself. So today, um, you know, if you are a part of a team who doesn't want to grow, then you can't grow. You and and if you want to grow despite the team not wanting to grow, that means you will have to put a lot of pressure on yourself and for others, and then that ruins your life experience itself. So why would you do that to yourself, right? So, so it is absolutely essential for, for us to recognize the source of the problem and be calm about it, saying that, okay, this is not possible, but I can try my best. And I'm not attached to the result, right? Somebody else is attached to the result. Somebody else, you know, screwed up on the estimation, which usually happens 99 out of 98 times. 
<laughs> right? Somebody always, you know, screws up the estimates. And then uh, you're working, trying to meet that. You're working, trying to meet that. But you must understand of what is realistically possible. And that's where your job primarily as a tester comes in is to warn people of the risks that we are getting into, into a project so that they can make, they can make you know, decisions according to the risks that we are you know, taking. So, 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 so if you go back to all the pointers that you can think about of, of, of wherever you felt the pressure or wherever you've seen your you know, leaders actually felt the pressure, um, you can you can look at it objectively and say, okay, so this is an you know this is the reason why this is happening, and and all I can do as a leader is to prevent this from recurring again, right? But when 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 it's too late, you can't do much about it. Now, um, the you know the other reason why people um, are are you know not able to solve problems is because um, they, they swallow things um, and they take it too personally. So, so people, um, it's, it's very easy, you know, like the sledging thing that I mentioned, right? Um, and this is it's also very dependent on the organization, you know, culture and, 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 and where you are in that, you know, cultural, uh, you know, thing is that when, when people say, hey, you could have done better, um, and if we take that as, oh my God, I did something wrong, then that's the way that we are screwing ourselves. And, we, and I've seen people um, you know, take a small feedback and feel so bad, about, so bad about it for like ages, for ages, right? Um, and and, and, I'll, and I wanna give you this example, right? So, um, so have you given feedback to people? I'm sure you have, right? And you tell them 10 good things they did and one bad thing that they did. <laughs> in the night they're not going to feel happy about the, oh my goodness my colleague recognized 10 good things about me they're going to feel about oh that one bad thing oh my god this is such a bad thing in my life that's that's how we are wired that's unfortunately how we are wired and that is the rewiring that we need to do in order for us to be able to be calm and peaceful in life that okay if i could do these 10 good things then i can also solve that one thing that i did bad and we have to be very, very objective about it. And I think, and I think essentially, what you know, what is required is that we practice objectivity before we practice being calm. Calm, being calm, is an outcome of a lot of other practices. So essentially, what we need to do is we need to practice objectivity. Okay, to say um, what what. You know, you know, is this about me? Like, for example, if somebody says, hey, Pradeep, you know, there's, there's something sticking in your teeth and that's the reason why I've not been able to test. <laughs> okay, I got to go brush my teeth. But, but if somebody is saying, hey, you, you missed these three test cases, I'm like, excellent. You helped me discover it. Now I'm not going to miss it. And what else can I actually do, right? So, so you know, so that's essentially what... what uh, you know, that's how you practice objectivity. That's how you practice objectivity. So I think this is the practice that you know, people need to do. And that's why I metaphorically put it out as swallow, but don't digest it, <laughs> right? And then, um, you know, we were talking about um, you know, leadership and you know, such internal curve and all of that stuff, right? Um, so, so here's one thing that I've learned making my own you know, mistakes uh, in you know leadership, and I've told this in some of the leadership workshops that I've done, uh, that the first introduction of what I thought was leadership was actually from movies, and I like a lot of a lot of you know like a lot of 129 crore Indians. I'm just leaving one crore out because they might be the smartest people out there, right? So 129 crore Indians, um, uh, I would I would have uh, you know been let's say thinking that. Uh, heroism is the leadership that we have seen and what we have seen in heroism is that the person is always in the front the leader is always in the front but then when i made those mistakes of always being in the front i realized that wow that was just heroism and that was not leadership and you know today um when i work with my colleagues uh 
my role as a leader and even their role as a leader is to know when to go front and when to go back. So, 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 so again, you know, connecting this to Sachin Tendulkar is about, you know, if, you know, Sachin has said that, well, I can do greater if somebody like, you know, you know, Ganguly or, you know, what's it, Dhoni is leading the team and I'm, and I'm playing the role of their opening batsman, the star opening batsman for them. I think this can be a winning, you know, success. And where, and where, you know, again, I'm, I'm going to give you a movie example here. Okay, just a movie example, but it's not, again, about the heroism aspect of it. And if you've seen this movie, Chakpe India, right? Um, you know, Shah Rukh Khan, you know, brings in one of the star players in the last game, you know, to say this is man-to-man -man marking and you are the only person who knows how to break this. That is leadership. That is leadership. To be able to say, look, I didn't, you, you know, you're not suited in these contexts. You're suited in these other contexts. So you should lead here and and you become my leader here and I become your leader here. So one good thing you all can do is, is you could go back to your team and you could say, hey, uh, you know, hey, dear colleague, you are the leader in these, in these aspects. You're the leader in these aspects. I am the leader in you know, these aspects. Let's help each other. So a good successful team has rotating leaders but there is one, of course, there's one, you know, designated leader who takes accountability, who takes reporting to the, you know, to the next layer. But in terms of execution, each, each one of you are actually leaders. So that's, that's a very powerful lesson that I've learned by making a whole lot of mistakes. You know, I, you know thanks to the first few years of, of, of my Mulya experience, I made, I kind of, uh, you know, tried exhausting as many mistakes I could make in my life. And I still don't seem to have exhausted it. So, so essentially, I'd like to, um, you know, I'd like to end this uh, um, um, with this important aspect of it that uh, changing the reaction to failure. Now, leaders are people who constantly deal with failures. Leaders are people who are constantly dealing with failures. Now, now, you know, we all are talking about Mahindra Singh Dhoni and all of that stuff, right? But but it's the same people who who would who would actually you know throw a stone when 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 they when they lost the World Cup and you know we, you know we become super emotional because we don't know how to react to react in order to failure right so essentially uh, you know this is you know this is another um, you know thing that I see that as you know systematically being actually brought up is that we uh, are not taught to embrace failure. We're not taught to embrace failure. We're not taught to look at, you know, failure as a good thing. We're taught to look at failure as a bad thing. And, and I think, you know, that's, that's been the fundamental reason why we have created great uh, workers, but we have not created great leaders. And I'm talking about this as a nation, as a world. Uh, and, and that's been a fundamental problem um, in, in many, many organizations. And you point out at any problems, you, you, you know, it always goes back to the leadership failure. You know, uh, uh, for, you know, for an example, Satyam was an awesome company. A lot of people were doing great over there. But then there's one big leadership, you know, you know what's a mishap that happened that, you know, costed the whole company. So, so it always goes back to leadership failures and, uh, and the reason why the Satyam debacle happened or what, why a lot of other companies you know, happened you know, is because people wanted to pretend success. People wanted to show a certain success that is not true because they don't know how to deal with reality and, and the reality for them is the failure. So if we learn to accept reality, if we learn to change our reaction to reality, I think we will um, we will put ourselves in a position to be better leaders for 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 both ourselves and for others. Now, thank you very much for the time that you've spent, and I would be happy to take any questions or let's say any comments that you have, and then um, we will spend the next uh, you know fifteen twenty minutes uh, answering questions and. You know, I can also hear out some, you know, comments that you have. 
you know, stuff like that. So thank you. I hope uh, this was, you know, this was helpful. And I, and, I, and I can tell you this one thing for sure, right? So talking about calmness and all of that stuff, I wanted to make very simple slide deck. I didn't want to have a chaotic slide deck. So this is, this is one of the simple, simple slide deck that I could have you know, presented over to you. So thank you very much for that as well, for being very patient and for you know, participating in all of that stuff. There is great you know, wisdom over here okay, that I believe all of us can learn from. And uh, yeah, great. So, so let me just you know, start reading out okay, comments that have actually come in. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, Guruji is saying, uh, uh, in an increasingly chaotic world, what is needed is the situational leadership. Okay, fantastic. And, uh, you know, talking about, you know, situational leadership, right? Um, you know, here's another beautiful learning that I had about leadership. And, and this, you know, situational leadership, yes, uh, I was gifted this book and I, and I was really, really impressed with this book. I hope you've read the books of the One Minute Manager and, and there, is, there is a series of that and, and there is a situation, you know, leadership, what's a book as well. So, so one thing that I've figured out is that, uh, you know, a leader needs to constantly change hats, uh, needs to change hats from being a coach, a facilitator, a mentor, a lead, a manager, a boss, but try to bring the boss as less as possible so that, um, and, and when the boss comes in, so for example, you know, today to the team that reports to me, I have given them a protocol of when Pradeep the boss will come and their job is to not let the Pradeep the boss come out. <laughs> it's like I have multiple, you know, split personality disorder and uh, rather than calling it disorder, I think I should call it order. Okay, split personality order where, where I'm, you know, a coach, uh, you know, a mentor or facilitator, you know, I mostly, you know, what's the oscillate my maximum time of leadership, you know, between being a facilitator and a coach um, and uh, very rarely being a manager. Uh, and I, and I for, for, for one, don't know how to do the management part of it. Um, and, and that's where I take help from, uh, you know, other people in the team. You know, for instance, uh, you know, my, my business partner, Avinash, helps in, in the management part of it. Um, okay, and then I also, you know, bring out the boss, you know, sometimes. And then, and then we have also set a protocol between us of, uh, there's a code word between us of when the boss is actually speaking. So people can sense that and, you know, people know that, um, you know, there is a chaos and that's the reason why the boss is actually coming in. Okay, great, awesome, thank you for that. And uh, how can a leader cascade enthusiasm to his reportees? Um, you know, everyone is different. Of course, everyone is different. And I think, uh, you know, a leader should be able to understand that not everybody is going to be as energetic and be able to use their existing energies in a certain way. Uh, and that's where I think like, you know, like for instance, it's, uh, you know, again, I'm gonna go to the cricketing example. Um, uh, uh, you know, the cricketing example for this can be that how can everybody, you know, score at least, you know, 25 runs? It, no, it's not possible. The, the, the bowlers who are specialized um, uh, at, you know, bowling are going to stick to bowling and they may not even score four runs. So, so, so somebody else has to compensate for, for, you know, for the lack of runs that they score. So, so, so kind of understanding what the team is capable of is an important part of leadership. And after having understood, uh, there has to be realistic expectations, you know, set saying that with this team, this is what can be achieved. Now, yes, your leader might be pushing, your boss might be pushing for a higher, you know, what's a target for the same team, but then it can only happen over a period of time. So you'll have to say, yes, we can achieve that, but here is how, you know, the stages in which we can achieve that. Okay, so another question coming from Srinivas Kadiala, why leaders don't want to listen to the problems and they want the solutions, you know, to be heard? Okay, that's a very, very good question. Um, because leaders want to solve problems. Now, what, what can happen, you know, Srinivas, is that um, sometimes we can get uh, too much caught up in, in talking about the problem. So, so many times, right, uh, you know, what's the, people come to me and tell me one lengthy story. I do listen to the whole part of it, but I'm interested at the last sentence that they say. 
you know, because usually the last sentence they say contains the problem that they want to solve. They say, okay, Pradeep, so I need this to happen. Fantastic. You know, that's all that needed to, you know, to be told. So, 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 you know, uh, so it is important for us to not keep talking about the problem, work towards a solution, iterate the solution and get towards a better solution because nobody is going to have a perfect solution. Like for instance, when the coronavirus you know, situation hit, who knows what is the right thing to do right now, what is being done are our kind of experiments that are being done. And, and based on how the experiment results are happening is how the next set of, you know, strategies have to be planned out. So essentially people, people have to talk about, you know, solutions. And of course, people have to talk about, you know, problems, but people cannot be talking, people can't be beating around the bush. And this is another thing that we need to practice is where we need to be talking more precise. Uh, okay, both to ourselves and to the people around us. Okay, great. So how can leader deal with situation when he or she is assigned to lead his, his, his ex peer? Okay, do you mean to say that they were a peer and suddenly you have to lead them? Is that your you know, question? Um, and uh, okay, great. Yeah, so this has happened to me sometimes uh, that uh, the, um, it is very difficult that yesterday we were peers and you know, what's it today? We have to be their you know, lead. Psychologically for them, it takes a while to get adjusted to. Even, even though you say things in a very normal way, you know, uh, one thing that I've understood is that when I'm talking to people, I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to their insecurities. <laughs> this is what I've understood. And because I'm talking to their insecurities, they can, they can feel insecure about anything. They, you know, I can just say hi. And there are people who take, who take offense of, oh, did you see the way he said a hi to me today as compared to every other day? <laughs> it was just a simple plain hi, right? So, so. So one thing that I've understood is this, when I uh, work with people, I give them a lot of time to get comfortable with me. I, can, I, give, I give a lot of time. I mean, I know that in most cases, we think we don't have the time. I think we must understand that we do have the time and things can happen over time. Okay, now the best conversation to have with that you know, person is to say, okay, forget that I'm lead, I'm, you know, I'm whatever, let's work the same way. And, and you have to work the same way with that person um, till that person becomes comfortable. Or even though you might be the designated lead, you say, hey, but I want you to lead me for some time, giving them the comfort factor that you are not a threat you know, to them. And this is, <laughs> this is I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very cultural you know, thing. I've seen outside India, this works really nice and really easy, but here it's a big deal. Uh, that's again, you know, primarily the culture aspect of it. Uh, okay, so how not to get into micromanagement? You get your work done as a leader. Okay, so getting work done by people is uh, is so so so. Um, leading people does not mean getting work done. Leading people is removing blockers for them to do their you know to do their work so that they get the job done. You don't get the job done. They get the job done. And for and our job as leaders is to remove the blockers for the team, which is preventing them from succeeding. Okay, this is essentially what we need to do. Great. Uh, so getting the best out of your teammates. And then there are some few pointers from, you know, Guruji. Um, and then uh, there's, there's uh, what to do when leaders are not approachable. Okay, what to do when leaders are not approachable. Okay, so, so, so unless they say, don't, I don't want to talk to you. You always knock that door. <laughs> right. Um, so it's, it's one second. I'm just, I just need to sip some water. Yeah. So, so um, someone who is not approachable is not a leader. Okay. Point number one. Okay. Point number two is, if you still have to approach them, then you are the leader. You take the initiative, you approach them and you say, Hey, here are things that only you can solve. And here are things only you can make a decision on. I can just tell you these things, but I can't move anything on the ground. Okay. Till I have your support and I will wait for your support. And, and you please tell me what is required to win your support. 
And then if they are practical in what they are saying, okay, please do it. Okay, because here is another thing. Only a good follower can be a good leader. Because if you don't know what following is, then you can't, you can't then be a leader. So, so, you know, I've, I've heard these, you know, things, um, you know, my, one of my cousin is in the army and, uh, uh, you know, they go on a lot of, you know, missions and uh, they have to listen to the Lieutenant Colonel. Now they can ask any question. The captains and the majors can ask any question before the strategy is made. But once the strategy is finalized, their job is to just execute that, you know, thing going on the field and thinking about, oh, we should have done that. We should have done this. That usually happens in the IT space. Okay. But in the army, that doesn't happen. Now, yes. Okay. People, you know, you know, what's it? People get hit, people die, but that's for the analysis to happen, you know, later, at least in our IT space, there is no like, you know, physical death or anything like that. The worst case is there's a bug in production and, you know, a couple of emails and, you know, some Slack messages. So, so I think here, you know, people, it is much more easier, you know, for us to say, okay, I'm going to do exactly do what you want me to do, but I want you to also explain to me how this is changing any numbers for this organization. So that's, that's, that's the way I would, I would like to deal that, you know, as, okay, great fellas. So, um, anything else? Ego blocks growth. Yes, absolutely. While, while empathy unlocks human stories. Okay, great, great. Ego, so um, great. Um, so, so this is a very, very important uh, and interesting you know, topic. We all talk about ego, right? Um, how much of reading have you done about it? So I'm gonna suggest a book. I'm gonna suggest a book by Ryan Holiday, uh, which is called Ego is the Enemy. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very nice book, it talks, you would, you would be so much aware of what ego is after having read those 250 pages of, of, you know, of, of what ego is and why the ego is the enemy and, and how to recognize your ego and, and how to deal with others' ego and you know, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so Pavitra asks, uh, do leaders uh, should, have, should have assertive conversation always or it should be based on the individuals? Okay, um, so, so as I mentioned to you, um, leaders are people who constantly switch hats, switch hats from coach, switch hats from coach to a facilitator, to a leader, to a manager, to, to a boss. Now, when they're switching hats, for instance, uh, you know, if you've had a fitness trainer, you would have noticed that the fitness trainer, you want to give up, but the fitness trainer says, no, go ahead three more, two more, one more, right? And why do they do that? It's, it's not that they, you know, they, they sadistically enjoy the pain that you're going through. It's to help you see that you can do way better. But, but that can only happen if you have accepted them as a fitness trainer. It's not like some random people walk in and they say that, you know, two more, you know, three more, and you will certainly not want to do it. So it is important to build that, you know, trust, with the people that you're working with, and then you can be the coach, and then you can speak aggressive, assertive, and and people will still uh, not, you know, mistake you for that. And people will see that as a supportive thing because you will, you are, you're essentially coaching them to do better. You're you're facilitating them to do better. You're leading them to do better. You're managing them to do better. So that's where I I would say that um, you know this, and also um, there is there is this. Uh, uh, there's this leadership workshop where they teach you how to, how to be assertive, how to answer, uh, you know, how to answer during, you know, tough questions being asked and all of that stuff. There's, there's also one from, from the, uh, you know, from the Carnegie Mellon uh, and, and, and there are some, uh, you know, good options there. Now, um, okay, so recommendation on good leadership books. Okay. Um, so there is this book called The Professional by Subroto Bhakti. That's a very, very important book because I think leaders have to be uh, professional, uh, you know, without which, uh, you, know, you know, even results don't actually matter. And apart from that, um, there is this one minute manager, okay, that I was talking about, about uh, there's a series of those books that is also very, very good. 
Um, and uh, usually, you know, this is what I say, okay, finish these books and then again, get back to me. And then I will suggest you other books because I can suggest a whole lot of books. And if, you know, people don't read, then it doesn't you know, really matter. So I can even compile that list and, you know, put it out. So these are, you know, some of the books that I've read. And so since I've read, I know the value of it. And that's the reason why I'm recommending, you know, them at the same time, um, you know, just like, you know, you know, how we learn, you know, testing from everything that we do, uh, you know, leadership is also like that. Uh, but essentially becoming aware of something and practicing it are two different things. So uh, if we read one book and we practice what is there in that one book, it, it is it is far more valuable than reading a thousand books in that you know particular you know space. So I think the value is in practice. The value is in being able to apply and the value is in being able to bring it into the work. So with that, uh, we have hit the one hour mark of this you know webinar. Uh, I thank you very much for for the for the time that you have spent. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to officially close this. And uh, if you do, if you do continue to have any questions, I can certainly answer that. And, um, um, you know, once again, uh, you know, thanks for the time. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's, that's the, uh, that's the official closure. I'll be here for a few more minutes. If you want to be here, uh, continue to asking something or saying anything else. Um, and, uh, you know, I look forward to, you know, I look forward to doing, uh, doing, uh, you know, follow up session of this. I look forward to doing other sessions on the testing aspect of it. So if you, if you still think that, uh, you want, you want to be a part of those things, uh, you know, please do, uh, follow the Mulia channel on, you know, LinkedIn and other places, and we'll keep, you know, posting about it. There's so much more coming from, from, from other people in Mulia. We are using this opportunity of working from home to bring a lot of stories outside, to bring uh, more uh, workshops. So there's one that's going to happen about you know, performance testing. There's one that's going to happen about you know, using the you know, Bagasura for your projects. Um, there's one that's going to happen about mobile app testing. There's one that's going to happen about context-driven testing. So yeah, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of those things that it's going to you know, come up and I think you know, Deepa and others in the company are working towards a calendar for that. So uh, you will see more of this happen. So I'm, I'm quite excited about it as well. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, Shashank, you're being very kind to me. Um, uh, book name. What, what, uh, so many incompetent men become leaders. How about this book? Really? Oh, I, I've, I've not, you know, discovered that book. Um, so what I can do is certainly, uh, you know, since I have all your email IDs, I can, uh, I can compile the list that I recommend and I can actually share that over to you um, because, uh, you know, I just shared whatever was there on the top of my head, uh, you know, based on the content that we have actually looked at. So that's, you know, essentially what, what I try to do. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, Guruji, Pavitra, Deepa, thanks a lot, Deepa, for, uh, for all the organization. Um, and you know, Deepan, okay, Deepan, thank you very much. Okay, Shan, Shan, Shan is a nice name. Okay, Shanmugam. Okay, Shashank, Srinivas, Arun, M, Shirish, Guruji, um, Pavitra, Deepa, again, you know, Shashank, Arun, Arun, you know, thanks a lot for your contribution as well. Um, okay, Swami, um, and you know, okay, Sudindra. Okay, thank you, you know, thank you, everybody. I'm gonna sign off, you know, from this. Have a have a beautiful time. Please please do stay safe. Please do stay safe. And uh, if you are a Modi follower like me, then you know tomorrow go out with candles at nine o'clock for just nine minutes and switch off the candle after that and go back to watching Netflix. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs> bye. Uh, you know, Pranthi, can I can I end this? Yes, Pradeep. Yeah. Okay. So have you taken over uh, as the host? You can take it. You can take it back from me, and then I will, you know, close. You know that way. I can you take it back from me. Yes. Allow make host. Okay. So I've made you the host. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm gonna drop off. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See ya. Okay.